Week two is here, and it's time to check in with one of our featured teams from the Open Alliance. This team has been known for their awesome blogs throughout the years, and they've been doing a great job of documenting the Rapid React season. Uh, so please welcome from Texas, team number 3847 Spectrum, and members Alan and Mason, welcome. Uh, lots of great stuff, uh, of course, with week one just expiring. So you go into week two and uh, can't wait to see what you're doing. So take us through on what you're working on and lots of different cool prototypes and what you've been doing. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. First Updates Now is supported by Kettering University. Discover why Kettering University is the number one choice for many first students and schedule your tour at Kettering.edu. And by Stryker Careers. Help create the next medical breakthrough in a fantastic internship or career when you visit careers.stryker.com. Uh, one of the biggest challenges we've seen so far is the climb. Uh, it really grabbed our attention right from the start. Um, so we went through a lot of different ideas. And uh, as with most teams, we put you know dozens of ideas up on the whiteboard. And what we ended up with was something that we call the hook and latch, that's, that's the first name for it. Um, essentially, the idea behind it is that a powered arm will, well, first of all, it's a powered arm with an extension, a powered extension. Um, so it'll extend, uh, grab the bar, and pull back down, uh, getting us off the ground, and then latching onto the right side, and then powering the back out in the lowered position, powering back like the extension out, and then pulling back in and then just essentially repeating that until we get to the transverse bar. Uh, yeah, so we've been able to do several different like models. So we've been making little like laser cut models of how the climb's gonna work. So sort of the original ones had the um, hook kind of being able to tilt to get by the bar. Um, we played with some different ones where we had some 3D printed prototypes, parts of them to make the hook work a little better and trying to get some mass on them as well. All the way to, yeah, so we have the full prototype where we have the climb and everything built up. This is one fifth scale, so everything is roughly scaled to exactly how it's going to be, all the way to the bars themselves are one fifth scale. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we can kind of see how the current version of this is just, we just did this today, is able to extend out, come under, grab the next rung, trying to see in frame, and then pull it back down and do that same thing. So that's kind of where we are with the climb so far before this falls off the table. All right. <laughs> have you guys, uh, have you guys uh, thought about how you're going to power it, uh, how you're going to power the different actuations? Are they going to be motors or pneumatics or a hydro? Um, we have. So that's, that's one of the debates. It's almost certainly going to be motorized because we know we want it to be very fast. And so pneumatics, it's a little hard to get that much air pressure and that much or air volume um, at speed with the tubing rules and everything else. So doing... Motorized is going to be the fastest, but we're not sure right now is whether it's all going to be winch driven with cables or with it's going to be motor and sprocket. So the likely scenario if it's motor and sprocket is some sort of um, motor into um, like a max planetary or something and then into a big chain reduction and a nice big sprocket. So you get the long lever arm and everything to move the arm. The extension in all the discussions we've had with the students so far has been pulling down a cable and then springing it out. So you don't really need any, there's no force needed to bit, do the push out. We just need to be able to pull the robot up with the, the winch mechanism, basically. That's pretty cool. So what, what other, so I mean, I, I can, you've really done a great job explaining like how you've gone these little different iterations on this specific concept. Um, were there other hanging concepts that you considered and why did you rule those out as compared to this concept? Uh, yeah, there were. Most of these we ruled out in the very beginning whiteboard stage uh, because various members on our team had a bunch of great ideas. And so we put all these ideas up on the whiteboard and then also used CAD in order to like sketch out some of them to look, see if the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Me mechanisms would work out. If the geometry, that's the word. Uh, if the geometry would work out. And we found that oftentimes with we have this one called the reverse elevator, where it um, hooks up a bar to the two um, to the two bars, and then like which is the robot across. And we found that in a lot of our other iterations like that, the geometry simply didn't work out, or it would be putting stresses on the robot that we didn't really much want, especially with the way that we're predicting robots might swing when they enter on a new bar. Um, so that's how we ruled out most of our iterations. 
We're still thinking about maybe a couple other concepts, but this is our most promising as of right now. Yeah, so the the one that's still debating that we think a lot of other teams will do because we've seen, so like Zookeepers, the Robot in Three Days team has published their like elevator tilting arm mechanism. And that kind of model is another option. It just packages very differently into the robot. So you have to put it a little bit down lower. The robot probably has to get a little bit longer. This allows us to make the whole chassis a little bit smaller. I think right now in the sketches, it's like 25 by 28 as our whole robot chassis. So we're trying to make it pretty compact. So while we're driving around the field, it's harder for defenders to run into us. We can get into smaller spaces and get the balls out of the corners a little bit easier. Um, so if we can package it all nicely, this is kind of where we're going. But if we need to go back to something else with a more traditional elevator or one of like the climber kits that many of the vendors are selling, those types of things can definitely do the job. Um, and then we're hoping this one we can get to be faster um, since there's a little bit less movement than some of the other ones. When you're looking at the, from a timing perspective, uh, as you're looking at the game, how long do you either estimate or what is your goal in order to climb uh, as far as you want to get up to that traversal rung? Uh, ultimately, uh, hopefully sub 20 seconds. Yeah, that, that's probably what we drew up. I think we haven't really discussed it as a team since like day sure. one. Mm -hmm. um, but about if we can do the actual climb portion in 20, that means when we hear like the end game buzzer, we can be driving back, still get lined up and then do the climb. If we can get that faster, we obviously will. But at some point, if it's taking too long, it's probably better just to stay out and cycle and do a lower point value climb um, if it's adding too much time to the whole mm -hmm. mat or, or to the, of the match time. Yeah. Very, very cool. Um, so, so what's your, uh, so we, we've heard about your climb and obviously that's a big important part of this year's game. Um, what do you, what else are you kind of formulating for the rest of your team's strategy? Um, so critical to any part of the strategy is uh, intake. Um, so we've been messing, uh, working on the intake some, um, and that is ranged into a couple different areas, including compression and the materials we're using on the intake itself. Um, we found that because of the way the balls are and like how inflated they need to be, they can't compress much, which means in previous years, like in 2020, that level of compression simply just doesn't work. Uh, it's too much. Balls don't like going through that type of space. Um, so we are kind of extending the compression to at least uh, we found in our prototyping that a 8.5 compression about from the floor works well in sucking up those balls. Uh, but in terms of materials, we were working a little bit with, we tried Velcro because with the oversized tennis balls, it gave us the idea of maybe it would stick and it did to a degree. And I'm sure that'll work for some teams. We're still testing, uh, but we found um, like uh, cut up bands of silicon work very well. Uh, we found these tactical rubber bands and those yep. worked well. Um, <laughs> very tactical, but uh, we're, we're, we're still looking through various uh, materials, but we think those materials are going to play an important part in this game. Yeah, what? so some pretty, we're using some pretty soft rubber. So both of those, I think, are around like 35A in durometer. So they're pretty soft rubber that we can stretch over a tube and have it spin in the intake. Um, but in general, the, other, the, the biggest thing I think we took away from the intaking prototyping is that the balls kind of just like going where you tell them. So we were able to intake the ball with just like a plain polycarbonate tube. It wasn't great, but it worked. Velcro work, the different compliant wheels work, pretty much everything we've tested has at least sucked up the ball. Um, it's definitely slick. It doesn't like to get jammed in the corners, which is nice. So we don't foresee us needing to do a whole lot of indexing. So like in 2020, that was the hardest challenge really was getting the kind of the powered V-belt or like these floors or spin dexers. And it's just really not as necessary in this game where you have two balls that are play a really well together. We've been able to put them like, uh, next to each other, run them up belts and things and see that they don't try to jam up or get stuck. We run them just like into a wedge and they just like go nicely to the center. So there's not nearly as many problems moving the balls through the robot as the power cells caused mm -hmm. that we've all been dealing with for two years where they would just jam into any little corner and jam up your whole mechanism uh, very easily. Yeah, I, I know the teams sometimes uh, are a little uh, careful about messing up the... Uh messing up the balls early on, but how does the, um, like, have you noticed any like degradation? Like I know with the, in 2020, the power cells, we would have like the lemon zest everywhere. Right. And uh, so like, <laughs> what, what, uh, what, what is, what's the situation? It, it gets, they do get fuzzy. So after you run them through the Velcro a little bit, they start, you start ripping out the hairs and they kind of get 
fuzzy yeah. everywhere. And we, we've we seen like red and blue fuzz just starting to accumulate around the shop a little bit um, as we've been running it through the shooter and, or the launcher and the intakes. Um, I think that's about it though. But all of the compression and the outer skin and everything has kind of just stayed pretty much the same through the balls we've used so far. Yeah, it's been pretty consistent. It hasn't been a problem so far. We'll keep that out, but... Yeah, and we haven't been able to, like, pop them or even feel that we're at risk of popping them. I've heard of one team who's popped a ball, but that's it. Um, oh, I, I don't know. Uh, but <laughs> they've seemed fine so far to us. They've been a really good game piece. So That's we've great. seen some uh, prototypes of your uh, shooter as well, too, uh, come out where you have taken a previous year's shooter and you're looking at applying at least some of the principles or at least doing some testing that way. Can you tell us a little bit more what you're looking at doing from a shooting perspective? Uh, sure. So ta talking about that prototype specifically, we just took you know, one of our old prototypes, like you said, uh, and extended some of the spacers on it to accommodate for the different compression. Uh, we, we found that shooting is not very consistent, um, at least, well, it was on the uh, underinflated balls. That was before we got the correct PSI. <laughs> um, they're much more consistent now. But uh, regardless, uh, we're looking to. Um, we we took the idea from the old um, shooter we used in 2017. Yeah. Um, and we're looking at applying it in a couple ways, like an adjustable hood and a, um, which is new for us, a turret. Um. Yeah, so that, that prototype is um, just been around for a long time and we're able to adjust it. And really, at that point, if we know we're shooting with a four inch wheel, we know there's a lot of different wheel options we'll be able to use. So after that, we didn't really need to do too much until we got a full goal. And then we'll start catting out something closer to what the real launcher will look like on a robot. And then we'll build that as our model and tweak and tweak and tweak on that instead of spending a lot of time on a prototype, which is kind of a trap we fell into in 2020, that we spent too much time on kind of the wooden built up prototype. And then when we built the real version relatively late in the season, it did not behave the same way as the prototype and in unexpected ways that we had to then quickly solve before we were going to our first event. So our goal this year is to try to get much closer to the real models fast um, so then we can tweak on the real thing. Um, so we're not just trying to make a prototype better that doesn't actually reflect what the real robot's gonna do. So uh, looking at next steps for your team as you start to look towards, uh, you know, completing week two and maybe over the week two and week three, uh, what are kind of your next immediate steps that you look at as a team uh, going through the build season? Uh, I think we're looking to make some more fleshed out prototypes. We're just finishing up a mock-up of parts of the field, uh, just like the, uh, the hangar mock-up, and we're just finishing up the hub mock-up. So we're looking to use those mock-ups to start making those more fleshed out prototypes to get some, some of the variables down, be able to do better, say, climb testing more than just models and actually make real scale versions to see if it all works like we hope it will. Um, we think that's going to be an instrumental step because that could mean, depending on how those go, it could mean a big change in the way our robot operates. Um, so we're looking to get to that as soon as possible. Um, yeah, yeah I, think that, I think that's the biggest goal is just as soon as we can, getting that almost full-scale climber mock-up done, um, trying to get it under its own power and kind of doing the climb before we settle even on our exact robot geometry. Because if the climb has to change, potentially the rest of the robot has to change. Um, we are, a couple things we haven't actually mentioned, the drivetrain for the robot's going to be swerved. So we're not too worried about the actual CAD and everything of what the drivetrain looks like because we basically just know it's a rectangle and we're putting the swerve modules in the, out, in the corners. So that rectangle can change shape as we want. And it's not too important to like nail that down this week. Um, and then same with some of the other parts of the robot, they can move around a little bit to, to change depending on what the climb ends up being. Mm -hmm. Well, 3847 Spectrum, thank you so much for taking time. Tell us more about uh, your progress and your team. You always do such a fantastic job uh, documenting uh, what you're doing. If you're interested in seeing more about Spectrums, go ahead over to blog.spectrum3847.org where you can see uh, all the progress we're doing, a lot of great pictures we've been showing as well too. And if you're interested in seeing what any of the 30-plus teams that are part of the Open Alliance doing, check out the link in our uh uh, description section for the uh, the Open Alliance Discord, or you can check on Chief Delphi as well. But Spectrum will be checking in with you in just a few weeks. We wish you best of luck throughout the rest of the build season here. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First, alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Over one-third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades 8 through 12 and located in the continental U.S. scan the QR code and complete the form by January 31st, 2022 and receive more information about Kettering. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.